So guys, today on the counter in front of you, you can see we're looking at another one of the CMB made knives. Now this one is called the Lurker and it's a little different than the other ones we've had before. I had the Spear and I had the Knight from CMB made knives and I liked them a lot. This one is more akin to another knife that we've seen on the channel and I'll show it to you in a minute, but it's still a good, good knife. So let's take this, let's turn this around, let's take a look at it and see what I found first day that I've had it in my pocket. All right, guys, so let's get into this. This is the CMB Made Knives Lurker. This is the first day I've had it in pocket. I'm doing two knives first day in pocket today. Um, so this one is, this one has been in the pocket the longest today. It's been in for about four or five hours. And I find it pretty unique. I do like the CMB Made Knives. I don't know 100% sure. I'm not sure 100% how I feel about this one. It's a little bit different. So before we get into it any further, we're gonna do some quick size comparisons. Your first knife's gonna be the Reich Hummingbird, and it's only out because I just have not had this out for a while. This is actually my daughter's knife. It just needed to be out and cleaned up a little bit. These things are cool. These things are tiny. They are a, a marvel of technology. So that's just kind of a goof. Your actual first knife, which is your second knife, is going to be the Benchmade 940, which is just what's in my pocket today because I hadn't had it out and carried it for a while. And I just said, you know what? I should carry my 940, uh, especially considering it's the exact 940 I would want. So as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than the Benchmade 940, but not much. So it's just about an average size knife. So your last knife, as always, will be the Chris Reeves Sabenza Large 21, and these are just about one for one in size. So, you know, not a small knife, not a big knife, just an average size knife. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way and let's talk about the things that I found so far today. So like I said, I've had this knife in pocket since about six o'clock this morning. It's about 11 o'clock now, and I'm impressed with a couple things about it, but kind of let down with some others. Uh, the other two CMB knit knives that I mentioned, I had the Spear and I had the Knight, and they were both great, great knives. And this is not a bad knife. I'm not trying to say it's a bad knife. It just seems that this might be a more budget version of some of their knives, um, which I'm fine with, but some things have not gotten great. So we'll talk about those things at the end. Let's talk about the good things at, up front. You're looking at a very attractively ground D2 blade with a nice swedge, lots of facets, and it has been ground down like all of the CMB made knives I've reviewed so far. Very nicely thin behind the edge, really good edge geometry. I cut down a little bit of cardboard with this this morning and it just screams through cardboard. It does have a very good factory edge on it. Uh, it seems consistently ground, uh, and the blade grind is done really cleanly and consistently from side to side, which is one of the things you want to look for. When you start adding all these facets, it's great and all to add facets and add flash and pop to your knife, but if you can't keep those consistent and clean, it, it offsets, and when you look at it, your tip looks asymmetrical, even if it's not, your edge grind looks asymmetrical. So I did a really good job on that. Really big, beefy scales on this, big beefy handles on this liner lock with really good access to the liner. I cannot complain about access to the liner on this. Just about perfect on this. It, they didn't go too far down on this scalloping and they removed enough material on that side to give you really good access. The detent tension on the lock bar is not horrendous, but it's adequate to give you a good snapping action. And as with the other CMB made knives, just just at drop shut, just a little shake and it just falls home. Uh, jimping on it is really good. The jimping on both the flipper tab and the back of the knife are really good and grippy and sharp, which that's what I look for in jimping. The scales are nice and beefy and thick and fill your hand really well. And you've got really good purchase on this. And so far it has cut really well. The backspacer is done in G10 and you can see your liners marry up to real cleanly. And you have got a lanyard hole in the backspacer. I'm not a fan of that, but you know, hey, it is what it is that is going to make this lighter because it doesn't have a steel backspacer or a metal backspacer. And you have access to a lanyard hole if that's something you want. The pocket clip does not move at all. See how these, I get I get upset sometimes companies are doing the, the screws this direction 
and you get wiggle and wobble. You don't get that with this because these screws are far enough apart. They're milled in and that pocket clip is solid. The only bend you get is in the steel itself. Pivot and everything are nice and flush uh, and nothing sticks up. There's no real hot spots too much on this knife. Uh, that to speak of that I found so far we might see in heavy cutting when I do some heavier cutting tests and things like that and like I said it's an attractive knife I think I would have liked it if it was black g10 I think I would have liked it a lot better but I do have to say it reminds me a lot of another knife that we just saw recently let me grab it and I'll show you what I mean the Travessa Orion they have a very similar blade profile I mean, I know they're they're different, but this, it reminds me a lot. And I do have to say, I like this knife a lot, even though it's not real attractive. They These two have some of the same features. I don't find it as unattractive as the Travessa, but it's still not as attractive as the other knives. But so far in use, it has been great. So let's get this out of the way and we'll flip this around and we'll talk about the things that I have found that I don't really like about the knife. So now, honestly, there aren't a lot of negatives. The And some of these are just my, there's just things I don't like. Um, the way this feels in hand is really good, but the pocket clip is not, it's not like a big hotspot, but it just feels out of position. I feel out of position with this knife. Uh, you see how it sits in my hand and it's not aligning up. Let's see here, this knife, when I put this knife in my hand and I align with the cut, it's straight. It's like straight with my thumb, and you see what I'm saying? It's straight. When you when I get this knife in hand, it's canted off, and I think that has to do with the pocket clip pushing it out of position. So that's the first thing. Hang on a second, getting a text. Sorry about sorry about that, guys. Didn't mean I was getting a text. I was getting a phone call. My wife was calling me from Japan. Um, so yeah, it kind of gets out of alignment of the cut. You can see how it wants to roll in my hand. I have to readjust, and then it and then there's additional like tension on the muscles in the hand so you could get more fatigue because i have to hold it in position that's not the natural position it's not horrible but you can you can kind of see like i want it like that and it wants to sit like that in my hand so and i think that has to do with where the pocket clip sits but we'll see i'll take the pocket clip off and let you know for sure uh next thing i'm not such a big fan of like i said i don't mind g10 but this looks really cheap it's not badly done and it's it's cleanly milled and everything, but for some reason on this knife, it just seems cheap. I think black and black would have made this. I find that I don't like the green G10 as much in some knives. I think it just, I don't know why, it just looks cheap. I don't know if it's because I was in the military and I know what a military issue is and it's never as good as everyone thinks. Um, so I don't like the look. And then the final thing is, this has been a running thing with all the CMB made knives. I have a hard time. It's that is very close. It's really tight. I can get in there, but unlike a lot of knives, I can't just like, I have to really focus. Like I can't just like flick off of it. Like I want to with most knives. I can get my pad of my finger in there, but then it's not as secure. And you also run the risk of cutting yourself. I want to get my finger in there and flick it. And I just have, it's really tight and close. So, but that's not like, that's just this knife. All of the CMB made knives, I've had an issue with getting my finger in there and it could just be the size of my hands. But like I said, with the flipper tab, it's great. And then, like I said, the final thing is I'm not a fan of lanyards and then this lanyard holes, I should say. And then this just is cut in there. They could easily just like notch this out and left a spot inside, like put a screw through or a pin through and taking that all the way down. I think it would look cooler. If this was mine, all honesty, this would go on a grinder and I would just grind that off. I would grind that off to marry up and match those facets. I would just clean that up on my own. So other than that, like there's not really much, like I said, the action on it is great and it does, it cuts so, so well with this really nice thin edge. That is one of the things I will say about all the CMB made knives. The edge geometry on every one I've had come in so far has been stellar. They cut so well. And this is the first one that was not in like high-end steel. So I think this is part of like a budget line from them. Um, all the other ones were like M390. Uh, this one is in D2. So like I said, we'll carry it for a couple weeks and we'll see what play, pays, uh, what pans out on this one. I do, I do like it so far. So we'll see guys. Let's turn so like I said, guys, this is really, really similar to the knife I showed you earlier that I, that I do like that has an interesting, unique, unusual look to it. That is not all that attractive that, that, uh, the, the Trivesa Orion. 
Uh, but as far as all the other things that I would expect from the CMB knives that I've seen, yeah, it, it's definitely got it. So yeah, that's pretty much it on this one. It's kind of an unusual knife. It's not what I was expecting when I saw another CMB come across the counter. So uh, we'll see how it goes the next couple weeks in and out of pocket. I have a lot of things on my agenda. I've got a lot of cardboard to cut. I got a lot of things to do around the house and in the yard that I'm gonna use these knives for. So we should get a pretty in-depth review. Guys, that's it. Um, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why. I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you wanna support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. Make sure that you've got the bell icon set to all. Make sure you've got notifications turned on your device. And I would like to remind everyone, the likes are the best thing that anyone can do for a channel that they like. If you like the videos, it helps push us up the algorithm. If you don't like them, like I said, hit the dislike button, but tell us what you don't like. We can't change it if you don't tell us. Uh, other ways you can do it financially, I have a bunch of affiliate links. All of the Amazon ones are basically open. If you click on them, even if you don't want that item and you use that to purchase whatever it is you are looking for, I still get credit for it. It's basically a portal to my affiliate store. Um, I have got uh, a couple that have got discounts right now, 3% off airfare with airfare consolidator and 5% off your order at Coffee Brand Coffee if you use my affiliate link or the coupon code Crazy Sharp, all caps, all one word. Um, other things you can do that support the channel financially, I have a membership down below that gets you in on exclusive content, uh, baseline and premium tier members. Well, I'm, actually all members have access to my Gilded server where we chat, hang out. Baseline and premium tier members are automatically entered into giveaways that I do on the Gilded server and the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series here on YouTube behind a paywall. And the final way is I do have a merchandise store at Ember Shirtcare where you can pick up my merchandise or other creators merchandise at a discount of 10% if you use my coupon code Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, all one word, Crazy Sharp, saves you 10% at checkout. Guys, that's it on this one. Um, it, I hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, keep it clean in the comment section. It helps me moderate the channel. It's so much easier. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. I love you all, and I will see you in the next video.